The Browns have restructured Nick Chubb's contract to keep Chubb in Cleveland for 2024. So we're going to break it down on today's show because it might sound very simplistic and no big deal-ish, but I don't think it is. I, I think it's got some layers to it, and I'm going to explain that throughout the show. But let's get to the facts first here. So Chubb had his contract restructured to lower his $15.8 million cap hit, which it was never going to stand for 2024. And this is a delicate situation, right? You've got a star player that's beloved in the locker room, loved by the fan base, and the Browns didn't ask him to take a pay cut because they put incentives in his new contract where he could earn up to $12.2 million, which is what he was owed for 2024. But they kind of asked him to take a pay cut because incentives are just that, right? you got to reach those goals. He may or may not get them. So this is something that could have gone sideways. Chubb's camp could have said, no, we're not doing anything like that. I want the money I was guaranteed. But ultimately, both sides were able to come to a very peaceful resolution. And I'm very happy to see this because this solidifies that Chubb is staying in Cleveland for 2024. And that's great news to hear. Didn't think that there was a big chance of the Browns moving on from Chubb. I mean, from day one when Andrew Barry spoke to the media, he left it a little open-ended, but it always seemed like the Browns wanted to keep Chubb, Chubb wanted to stay, so both sides were going to come to a good resolution. Now, we've got a lot more to share on this because I don't think the story is done right here, and I'm going to explain why in a moment, but we are your Nick Chubb update home, so if you are looking for the latest on 24, hit the sub button down below. Every update we get, every crumb, every nugget, we're going to share it with you and help us reach 34,000 subscribers in exchange. I want to go back in time to January 22nd when Andrew Berry spoke to the media after the Browns playoff loss, and when asked about Nick Chubb, he said, I would, in terms of Nick moving forward, obviously I understand that's a little bit of the elephant in the room. Nick, I can say for myself, no one in the organization, I understand our family, nobody wants to see that carry in Pittsburgh be the last time he carries the ball for the Cleveland Browns. And obviously there are things that we'll have to work through, but that would not be our intention, that would not be our intention as well. We obviously will work to keep him on the team. So Nick Chubb back in you know January had some overall optimism, but nothing was guaranteed from Andrew Barry's statement that he would come back from 2024. Andrew Barry never likes talking about players' contracts and whatnot to the media, so the fact that he even said that much was a pretty good indication of the Browns were going to work hard to keep Chubb back and. It takes two to tango, so I'm very happy that both sides were able to come to you know a good agreement on a new contract to lower his cap hit, and we'll look at what that means for the Browns' cap situation later on. But what I want to say here is I hope the timing of this contract restructure slash new deal basically is important because we're two weeks away from the NFL draft, and maybe this is me being Brian Windhorst, and maybe I'm overthinking this, but just... Let me try and land this plane. Two weeks from the NFL draft and the Browns restructure Nick Chubb's contract. Coincidence? Or is this a sign that Nick Chubb, who has been working his tail off to get back on the field, going to the Browns facility as early as 5 a.m. to work on his rehab, is this a sign that the Browns expect Nick Chubb to come back sooner rather than later? in 2024 and they got this done before the draft because now they don't go into the draft with a much more pressing need to get a running back whereas if they do it after the draft they might have picked a running back earlier on in the draft process and then all of a sudden Nick Chubb may not be looking super shiny to come back early in 2024 could be overthinking it but I wonder did the Browns get this done because they got good news from the Docs that, hey, Chubb's going to be back sooner rather than later. may not be for week one, but it won't be by week 10. So you don't have to worry about finding a new replacement in the draft. So the Browns got this done with Chubb, and now they go into the draft going, okay, the pressure is not as uh, serious for us to go address running back early in round two or three. Who knows? Uh, I also want to share with you guys what Andrew Barry said on February 27th saying the next call at three months will be pretty telling 
in terms of his potential readiness for early in the season. We're going to be conservative in our terms of our approach and our assessment with building the roster because he's coming off a major knee injury. But I do have to give him a lot of credit. He's done a really, really nice job. But I think we'll have a better sense. Don't hold me to it, but I think probably if you ask me that question around the draft, I may have a maybe a little bit more of a specific answer. So fingers crossed that Andrew Barry, who said, we've been conservative in our approach in building this roster because we're waiting for an update on Nick Chubb on February 27th. Fast forward to April 11th, six weeks later or so, and maybe he got the good news he was hoping for back at the NFL Combine, and now he goes and gets this done because he doesn't need to worry about the running back position as much as he may have anticipated six weeks ago in the NFL draft. Right, That's sort of the foundation of where I get this idea of maybe this is a good sign that's pointing to Nick Chubb returning earlier in 2024. But let's show the guys some love. Type 24 in the comment section. I love when we do this type of uh, call to action, as we call it in the biz here, because you guys always show up and show out. So show Nick Chubb some love right now. I'm sure he wants to see what the Dog Pound is saying after the restructured deal. And I want him to come across this video with 2,424s. Now, Nick Chubb comes into this year, of course, after only playing a game and a quarter in 2023. But man, it's hard not to think about what could have been if Nick Chubb doesn't go down. The guy was averaging 6.1 yards a carry. I know it's a small sample size, 28 carries, but... He was running with a vengeance, it looked like. And I don't really know what vengeance he needed, but that's Batman for you. Now, we do have to address, I wouldn't say the elephant in the room anymore, but maybe like the baby elephant, which is he got a second surgery in November 14th. Usually ACL injuries take 11 to 12 months, maybe 10 on the early side. And so 11 months would be October 14th, and 10 months would be September 14th. And even then, there'll probably be some ramping up that goes on in the first few games, right? You can kind of remember that back when OBJ returned from his torn ACL. He wasn't 100% that first game back for the Browns. But this is not uncharted waters for running backs to come back from a serious knee injury. I mean, two notable examples, Adrian Peterson, Jamal Charles. Now, they only tore their ACL. Chubb had an injury to his MCL, his meniscus, and his ACL, so... A much more serious knee injury, which is why I don't want you to fall into the trap of, oh, AP did it. It should be no big deal. Nick Chubb is much more similar to Adrian Peterson in terms of a physical makeup and just overall like unbelievable strength and just generational type talent. But he's probably somewhere in between what AP went through and what Javante Williams and J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards went through slash are kind of coming out of, right? Nick Chubb is better than all these three running backs by a mile. He's much closer to Adrian Peterson than Dobbins, Edwards, and Williams. That's not uh, up for debate here. But he does fall in this bucket of he tore multiple knee ligaments like Williams, Dobbins, and Edwards did. So I think if you're looking to put together a projection for what Chubb could look like in 2024, I don't think it's going to be as great as AP's back, uh, bounce back ACL injury season, but it's going to be better than what those three guys who suffered torn knee ligaments went through because, sorry to them, Nick Chubb is just different. Like Nick Chubb is Nick Chubb. He's Batman. I'm never going to bet against that guy to make an absolute ass-kicking of a rehab. So for that, maybe this is just the optimistic in me and the half-glass-full approach here I want to have and speaking it into existence, but can you imagine Nick Chubb back by week four? Like starts the year off on the pup list, misses the first three weeks, Week four, end of September, early October rolls around. That feels like a reasonable return date for him if everything we've kind of, I wouldn't say been told, but just the you know slight tidbits of information we have gotten over the last few months about his rehab is true. Him being at the facility at 5 a.m. in the uh, like water chamber, hydro chamber, I don't know what's going on there. I've never torn a thing in my body, but you can't tear fat. Uh, but if all that is true, then I'm thinking week four. I think I'm just fingers crossed here. That's what I'm trying to say here. Fingers crossed. Just trying to be, you know, optimistic because can you imagine Nick Chubb back on the earlier side with this offense? 
Well, that's what we're, gonna, what we're gonna look at next here on the show. But first, I want to tell you guys about our sponsor today, which is Game Time. Download Game Time today because we've got baseball, playoff basketball next, playoff hockey around the corner. There's a lot of great action going on, and I don't want you to miss a single thing. Whether you're a Cavs fan, a Guardians fan, or any other sporting event in your local area, get twenty dollars off your first purchase when you use code Chat Sports after downloading the Game Time app. There's nothing worse than hidden fees, but Game Time gives you an all-in price option right from the start, so you can actually know what you'll be paying before you get to the checkout process. It's the best place to find last-minute seats. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Chat Sports for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem code C H A T Sports for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, after the contract restructure for Nick Chubb, his cap hit went down by a reported nine million dollars. I got that from Zach Jackson at the Athletic, and that would bring the Browns' cap space to around twelve point nine to thirteen ish million dollars. So, very much above the uh, NFL salary cap, and kind of makes you wonder. They've got thirteen million dollars in the piggy bank. That's plenty of money to pay their draft picks, which right now is not going to cost them a lot of money. They've got five picks as things stand, and the first one is pick 54. So it's not like they've got a big round one check they need to sign. Maybe they don't restructure Deshaun Watson's contract. It would be an NFL record $63.7 million cap hit. But you can look at his cap hits for the three remaining years he's under contract for, and they added a void year in 2027 when they restructured last year. Now, the salary cap is a myth, but it's also not a myth, and it's super difficult and complicated, and at times it can be somewhat simplistic. Like, it's all those things at once. But if you really want to dumb it down into layman's terms, this money's not going nowhere. Like, at some point, you got to pay the piper. So whether that's now or later, and there's pros and cons to both, right? You can kick the can down the road, and the Browns can continue betting. It's a good bet to make that the NFL salary cap will always go up like it did, and it will lower percentage cap hits in the future. You could restruct or you could uh, extend Deshaun Watson's contract if he plays super well, spread those cap hits out, and you never get stuck with this huge bill. But if Deshaun Watson does not improve his play, and there's not reason to believe he's worthy of a contract re- uh, extension, at some point, you do got to pay all this money in cap hits. And if you keep pushing it back and then you don't plan on extending Deshaun Watson, the only two options you're really left with are a ginormous cap hit in 2025 and 2026 or adding a bunch of void years and then paying a guy a lot of money or at least on your books for cap hit-wise purposes, a lot of salary cap hits for a guy not on your team. Neither option is all that great. So I don't think it's the worst idea in the world if you don't need the cap space to roll into 2024 with $63.7 million. I kind of look at it in a very simplistic version of this is all homework you have to do. You can either push your homework to Sunday night when 60 minutes pops up before Sunday night football, or you can maybe get some done now because you have some time in 2024 or you have some time on this Wednesday after school. may not be fun, but... I don't think it's a bad idea to kind of rip some of that Band-Aid off and eat $63 million of this cap hit and not put yourself in a tough squeeze in the future if you don't envision Deshaun Watson being here past his five-year contract. Now, if Nick Chubb is ready to roll early in the season, what I was talking about earlier is, can you imagine what this offense is going to look like when he's at 100%? Like, I'm not going to even ask who's stopping this offense because I won't put myself in a spot where the jokes write themselves. But you get Watson going the way he looked in 2020. Chubb, Cooper, Jerry Judy is your number two. David and Joku off a career season with a top five offensive line, in my opinion. Jed Wills, Jack Conklin, Dewan Jones, they all come back healthy. All of them have been working very hard this offseason in their rehab, and they're expected to be ready, by, ready to roll when training camp rolls around. Petonio Teller, two Pro Bowl, all pro caliber guards. And the funny thing is, like Ethan Posick may not even be the worst player on this offensive line, but we never talk about him the same way. We talk about other guys. 
and he's still a top 10 center in football. So grade the Browns offense when fully healthy. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know what your letter grade is in the comment section. I would give it an A-. minus. Now, a lot of that hinges on Deshaun Watson's play, right? We can't just stick our head in the sands and act like it's been a perfect experience through two seasons so far. I'm choosing to be optimistic and believe that Watson can play and live up to the potential because we have seen good moments. And those that say it's been a disaster just haven't watched Cleveland Browns football. They're just going off the box scores ignoring his perfect second half against the Baltimore Ravens, right? The great game he had in week one against the Bengals in the second half. Like, I know we're kind of nitpicking moments here, but I'm not going to act like those moments don't exist. So I would give it an A-, minus, and that's probably a little bit of a homerish coming through, so maybe downgraded to a B plus. but I think it's one of the better offenses in football. So to kind of put a bow on today's show, let's just talk about the running back room as a whole. Whether or not Nick Chubb is ready to roll early in the season, I don't think the Browns can expect him to be at a full like 20 to 25 carries a workload workload kind of a uh, you know 20 25 carries a game workload. So you're going to have to ask Jerome Ford to, you know, serve a pretty decent role to begin the season. And the way he looked last year, there were some good moments and then there were some not so good moments, okay? which is why the Browns went out and got Deontay Foreman, who's a short yard specialist that can really help out with third and one, third and two, goal line situations. Go back to his 2020 season with the Panthers. He came in, wasn't even the starter, averaged 4.5 yards a carry. I don't think he's going to you know, completely revitalize this offense, but I think he's an improvement from Kareem Hunt last year, and that's a tough thing to say out loud because Hunt means a lot to this fan base, but... I think you're going to get better production out of Foreman in 2024 than Hunt in 2023. And then finally, Naheem Hines, who I believe at this point is going to predominantly serve in a special teams role. Keep in mind, he's also coming off a torn ACL, very unfortunate off-the-field boating incident in the summer of 2023. So he's got to work himself back to 100% just like Chubb, but I think we're going to see him in a special teams role more than in a running back role. But... The draft should tell us a lot as to where the Browns view their running back room. Do they go running back in round two or round three? If they don't, to me, that's a huge sign that they believe Nick Chubb is going to be ready to roll earlier in the season than maybe we anticipate. Now, if we see four running backs get picked before the Browns at pick 54 and then in round number three, maybe that's just unlucky uh, breaks for the Browns in terms of guys they were hoping to fall to them don't fall to them. But very excited for the draft because that's going to give us a good look into where the Browns view Nick Chubb's rehab. Now, let me know what you guys think about this. Should the Browns go running back in round two? We'll conclude our video with this question, yes or no. All right, I've taken up enough of your time this Thursday morning slash afternoon. Um, Colin, which car do you want to go with? I'm going to go with six of clubs today. Six of clubs? I'm going to go... For Nick Chubb, two plus four. Is that, yeah, I, I thought so. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Jack of Clubs because he's Batman. Okay. And he always gets the Joker. Yeah. Right? So. There you go. Ready? Ready. Oh, Jack of Diamonds. <laughs> Damn it. It's brutal. Beat. That's brutal. All right. I had the right train of thought, too. We'll let you guys get on out of here. Go Brownies.